So blessing and welcome on one of the stars of one of the Cinderella teams this past year at North Texas and now the newest member of South Carolina returning back home. James Reese, how you doing, man? Good, man. How are you? Pretty good. Well, this is something pretty big, and that is that you are returning home. You get to go get the extra year eligibility, playing for mm -hmm. South Carolina. How are you feeling right now? Man, I'm feeling good. Uh, you know, I mean, it's been a crazy journey. You know, I kind of been all over. I went all the way up north, came back down south to Texas, yeah. West Texas. Uh, you know, and I'm back, uh, you know, east, uh, came to Dallas, man. It's been a crazy journey, you know, to find my way all the way back home. I thought last year, you know, it was over with. I, There's no way I'd be able to play back home. But, uh, you know, COVID happened, and it just worked out perfectly. We were talking a little bit before this, and you just mentioned something that's kind of crazy. You haven't even played back home in your four-year career. Obviously, you took the Duco route, played two different other Division One colleges, but – this is your first time just completely playing college basketball back home with family, with friends. How's that going to yeah. feel? Man, it's going to feel unreal, man. Uh, like I said, it's been four years. Uh, I kind of missed the feeling. Like, uh, I kind of forgot what that felt like, you know, to play in front of, like, family and friends all at one time. So, you know, I'm just really eager to get that feeling back and uh, just see how that is. As you mentioned, though, you have had an incredible story, and I kind of want to go through that so that Gamecock fans can get to know you a little better. So let's head all the way back. Like you said, you are from South Carolina. What was it like growing up out there? Uh, man, it was, you know, South Carolina, it was just more like, uh, you know, whatever you get yourself into, you know, uh, you know, that's just what's going to happen. So I, I feel like, you know, it's just about, uh, about being sucked in. If, if you can just keep yourself, you know, focused enough, you know, to just be by yourself or to do the right things, like, you'll be fine. So you just basically, it's just a place where, you know, if you let your, allow yourself to get sucked into things, you know, it can go bad for you. But if you stay focused, you know, as you can see, we got a lot of people from South Carolina that done, you know, been success, successful over the past cu couple of years. So, you know, all you got to do is keep your mind focused. Uh, and I feel like South Carolina is a place that you can get out of because it's, you know, it's a grind state, uh, country. Uh, so, you know, you put your head down and grind, you know, it'll be, you, can, you can make something happen out of there. The Carolina as a whole is a place, like you said, it's got really one of the bigger power producing places in terms of basketball. We see lots of guys make it out of South Carolina and North Carolina, mm -hmm. not just the Division mm -hmm. One level, but also to the pros. There's a lot of stars yeah. from the area. You personally was in an area, like you had guys like Nick Claxton playing out there. You had a few of your teammates that's also playing Division One right now. Mm -hmm. What was it like in terms of basketball, though, like going up against these top guys day in, day out? What was it like growing up with that group? Uh, well, honestly, it, it was great, man, like competition, because uh, at that time, I was one of the top guys, too. So, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? It was like we all was just, you know, battling for one thing. But, it, I mean, it was great, man. Like, we got some great dudes that came out, man. So, it was some great battles back in the day, man. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy to call South Carolina home. Out of all those guys that kind of was in your group, the so guys that you played at against throughout your high school career, who were the like, one or two guys that you knew that you'd love to play against? Like, even if it was just another guy that you made in guard, but, like, who was, like, that mm -hmm. match that you were most excited for? Uh, you know, the guys that I really, uh, you know, wanted to play in high school, you know, because they were the other good guys on their team was uh, Jalik Felton. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I don't know if you ever heard of him. He went to UNC. Mm -hmm. Jalik Felton. Uh, I played John ja Morant my high school year, you know, a couple times. Well, one time my, my senior year. You know, but uh, those – oh, I played uh, – say you ever heard of Seventh Woods? Mm-hmm. Seventh Woods, you know, I got into a couple battles with him my junior year. Uh, Chavez Goodwin, who is at USC, mm -hmm. played him. Uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of guys. I played Zion once uh, junior year, played, you know, so it's a lot of guys, you know, that I done played in, like, tournaments around the uh, city, all of that. I mentioned John, he kind of has the same story that a lot of you guys do in terms of being an underrated guy. For whatever reason, mm -hmm. we see the names that come out of South Carolina, but the rankings don't really want to come out there and rank you guys that high. A lot of guys get disrespected rank-wise, but mm -hmm. what's it like kind of seeing you guys, all these different stories that kind of came up from really not having any kind of national spotlights. Now, John obviously being a top two pick, Zion being a top mm -hmm. two pick, you obviously making a successful college career so far. Like, all these mm -hmm. guys, what's it like kind of growing through this and kind of having that chip on your shoulder? Man, it's you know, I mean, some some people it, it's a it's a great feeling of knowing when when you was working so hard for something and nobody noticed, and then you just keep working and then you finally just break through the door. Like that's the best feeling ever. Like you know, and I just feel like 
you know, that's what, you know, that's, that's what makes us like, you know, if that, that's, not, that's our, that's our story. So you feel me? If that didn't happen, it'd be no job. It'd be no Zion. Like, so I, that's, that's really the only way I feel like it, it, it could go for us, you know, mm-hmm. just to get overlooked. And, and that, that's what made us work harder. When you did play job that time, was he as good as you thought? Like, did you think he was going to become a guy that's now a debatable like, borderline NBA all-star? Like, did you think he could be that good when you first played him? Uh, I knew when, when I first played Ja, I knew he was going to be real good. But, I mean, mm-hmm. like, I mean, yeah, honestly, nobody nobody thought, like, he was going to, uh, you know, be like a, the, a borderline all-star. But, uh, you know, like, he, he was a worker. He worked he worked his mind off, and he got to where he need, where he wanted to get, wanted to get. So it's nothing but respect. You also mentioned that you played Zion. What was that game like? Oh, yeah, Zion. High school, Zion was still good. Zion was a physical, high jumping, you know, Zion is just Zion. Same thing he's doing now. He's been doing that since 11th grade of high school, literally. And we did see some of his mixtapes. Obviously, that's what made him blow up and be famous in high school. What was it like when you guys went against him? Like, was he throwing other type of dunks on you? How did you guys guard him? I tell you guys to just guarding Zion. Uh man, uh, I mean, Garden Zion, you just really gotta, you know, just try to get in his way, try not to give him no running lanes to the basket, uh, you know, that type of stuff. I mean, it's not really no guarding him, you know what I'm saying? You just really gotta get in his way, try to not let him get as many as easy baskets. So, I mean, that's what I do, like, <laughs> um, like, uh, there's really no way. You decide to go to high school, you stay up for four years, and that's not always something a lot of guys do, but. You decided to go out there to AC Flora. Why did you decide to go there? Like, why is that the school you wanted to attend for your high school career? Uh, AC Flora is, uh, is a crazy story because uh, actually the high school I was trying to go to at first, they wanted me to cut my dreads off. Well, I had braids at the time. Mm-hmm. They wanted me to cut my braids off, but at the, I wasn't cutting my hair off. Mm-hmm. You know, So I went to the coaches at AC Flora, you know, talked to them, and then – Crazy thing, one of my middle school coaches ended up getting a coaching job at AC Flora. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it was just kind of like a smooth trend. It was like, it was easy at that time, you know. They told me I had to cut my dreads. I didn't want to cut my hair. My high school coach left, so I just left with him. You know, pretty easy decision. Uh, you know, it wasn't where I was supposed to go at at first, but, you know, good thing I, good thing they told me I had to cut my hair because, I mean, I don't know if I'd be here if, if, if it didn't happen. So is that a rule that the coach wanted you to cut dreads off or is that something that the school has, like the principal, the admin, did they want you to cut off? Like, who told you that? No, nah, the high, the coach wanted me to cut my dreads, but a story came out later on, like, because uh, it was a couple people just asking me, like, why I ain't coming? I told them, and uh, the coach actually got fired because, you know, that he he was he couldn't do that. He couldn't tell mm-hmm. me I had to cut my hair in order to play basketball. So he ended up getting in trouble for that, but – you know, it wasn't nothing that the school policy. It was something that the mm-hmm. coach just said I had to do, and that made me transfer. And we're going to discuss a lot of different things about you, but one trait that's pretty much above all else, in my opinion at least, is that you are a winner. Obviously, we mm-hmm. see you have game games where you go out there and score 20-plus. You can score at will. Mm-hmm. A facilitator, you can do all that, but at the end of the day, you win games. You won two state championships throughout your high school career. You've gone mm-hmm. and upset multiple teams now in the NCAA tournament. You brought your team to the national tournament for JUCO that one year. How do you mm-hmm. kind of just kind of discuss this? Because not a lot of guys have that winning mentality where it truly brings wins to a team. What is the winning mentality and how do you develop that? Uh, well, the winning mentality really came from like high from I don't well, it's just I got like this type of like little fire to me. Or like I don't know, like I just don't don't really like to lose. And then I grew up with some guys in like high school that was just like real tough and they ain't really deal with losing. So I mean that's just kind of like what I was brought up on and uh mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I just – I'm a winner, so, like, I know how to, like – you know, I, I literally play every role you can think of, you know, on a winning team. If, if it was the bench player, I was that. You know, if it was the starter to get 30 points, I was that too. And, you know what I'm saying? I really don't play, like, every role, so it's just kind of like that's all I want to do and, like, whatever I got to do, like, that's what I'm going to do to win, you know. So, you know, that's just kind of how it is me. I just – you know, I, I if I win, you know, I'm I'm feeling good. Like, and it, I don't like losing because when I'm losing, it's not like it's not a good reach. I think the reason a lot of guys don't really have that mentality anymore is because a lot of guys want to be that go-to guy. And if 
They're not mm-hmm. being the guy that's getting all the offense ran to them or even maybe a second option. They want to mm-hmm. leave the school in high school. They want to transfer out in college, something like that. But you really have embraced the role. You've embraced his saying, okay, what do you need me to win, coach? Like, what do you want me to do? And I'll perform that the mm-hmm. best I can. What does it take for you to accept that role and really embrace a certain role? I mean, you just got to, you know, you just got to really believe in, like, I mean, you just got to, you know, believe in your, believe in your work. Like, you can't let nobody, like, put you in, like, a place. Like, if you want to win a team and you're, like, on the court, a coach can't tell you you you're, you can't shoot the ball. You can't. So, I feel like just trust your work. Like, you know, go out there. Don't don't go out there saying you want to be the main player. If you want to be the main player at work, go out there, find a way to stay on the court 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. You would do that. So that so that's just how I see it. Like, if I can find me away on the court for 30 minutes, like, I'm not going to the coach whining about shots. Like, you know, like, I'm just trying to, like, like let's win. Uh, like, I'm on the court. That's all I want. It's 40-minute game. I'm trying to – if I can play 30 minutes of those 40 minutes, I'm not saying nothing. Like, I'm out there. Like, you know, so mm-hmm. that's just kind of what I – you know, I just try to find my way on the court, like, and not really – you know, I'm like I'm I'm a hell of a player. So the coach the coach going the coach going is gonna have to like he's gonna have to like you know I'm gonna have to shoot the ball because I'm a player. I'm out there. Like so, you know, I just you know I just you know I just I just I just don't have no self pride, man. I just just suck it up, you know. Just just be a tough guy, you know, a tough guy in the right way. Mm-hmm. That's just it, like. I can't imagine that you probably do have a favorite role, though. So was there one that, you, out of all the times, all the different roles you played before, which one has been your favorite one? Man, I like – I like uh, – man, I, I, I mean, everybody's scoring. <laughs> I'm trying to score. <laughs> I'm trying to get a bucket. But, shoot, I mean, I, honestly, like, this – no, my – people don't really say this, but, like, defensively, like, that's, like – like, that's where, like, I really – like, that's my game. If I'm playing good on defense, I'm, I'm playing good on offense. So <laughs> – you know that's kind of the starter for me. You know, I'll just uh, like a real, a real answer. To, uh, you know, defense is is something that you know that I I want to be the best defensive guy on the floor, like guard wise, like every night. Like I don't like I want to I want the best player, like all of that. So so I say defense. Let's hop into that freshman year. You guys go twenty two and nine that year. You start off your high school career with the state championship right off the back. What was that mm-hmm. year like? Uh, it was tough. Uh, you know, because uh, uh, my freshman year it was up and down for me. You know, it was kind of tough. I was coming from middle school. I wanted to play a lot. You know, I wasn't as good. You know, so I didn't get as many minutes as I want. And, like, it was a state championship team, you know. So that year I was uh, – a that was my year. I was more of, like, a supporter, you know, and practice player type guy, getting the other guys better. Mm-hmm. But it was good. You know, we won, so it was great. <laughs> we won. And you start kind of going through your high school career, but when did you start clicking free? Like, when did you feel that you really started emerging and becoming that guy that you felt like every time you step on that court, you are one of, if not the best player? Like, when did you start saying that you think you can be that guy in high school? Uh, I started to feel like that after my after my sophomore year, going into my junior year of high school. That's when I started to feel like whenever I stepped on the court, I was the best player because – my sophomore summer, I remember the state championship game, the game we lost, my high school coach sat me out the whole fourth quarter and I didn't play and we lost by two points. And he, and he to this day, like he he ain't he didn't explain to me like what happened, but you know, and to that day, where well, that day happened and I just and I just worked my behind off that whole summer. And then my eleventh grade year, things changed and uh, you know, I was I was I turned into that player. You have that relationship with Coach Daly. Obviously, you grow that throughout your career there. How close to that were you guys? Like, how much, how important was it for to have a guy, Coach Daly, in your life that kind of helped mentor you and really helped develop your game over your high school career? Man, Coach Daly, he is probably one of the most important people, like, in my life, like, right now to this day. Uh, still talking to him. Talked to him yesterday, you know what I'm saying? That's just, that's just you know, somebody that I just talked to for life. Helped me with my decision I just made, you know, Coach Daly. You know, he really showed me, like, uh, you know, he just was always there for me, man. Like, uh, you know, I grew up in the house, just me and my mom and my sisters, like, so, you know, he was just always, you know what I'm saying, the other little something like a father figure. Like, later on in my life, though, when I got to high school, you know what I'm saying, kind of took me under his wing, you know, uh, kept me out of trouble. Uh, so, Coach Daly, man, he, he, he's important to me, man. Coach Daly, uh, 
I ain't, I'm, I'm never gonna forget Coach Staley. Like no matter what, like Coach Staley always gonna be in the loop with me. How critical is that for a guy? Because I think anyone, if you're an athlete, if you're just living life throughout high school, like whatever you're doing, like having another father figure in your life that can kind of help mentor you, keep you on the right track, kind of be there to support you. How critical is that, especially though in your case as an athlete? Man, it, it's it's very critical, especially when it's consistent. You know, as it, it was, Coach Staley was consistent with it. Like he never let me like slip. Like it was, it was always, what are you doing? Get back on track. Like so. You know, when it's consistent, man, it's, I mean, it kind of just, like, wears on you. So now I'm just, like, you know, I don't get in trouble no more. You know, I'm too, like, I be locked in on other stuff, you know, trying to, like, get better with everything. So that's just kind of, like, what Coach Staley did. He kind of, like, scarred me for life in a good way, you know. Always got me thinking about, you know, the best situations to be in, uh, pros and cons of everything, you know, type stuff like that. So in that junior year, as you said, you have your breakout year. Is also bringing another high level division one player, Nishan, to come out with mm-hmm. you guys. How did that mm-hmm. transition go? Like, what was like getting him on the team, and how did you really develop that dynamic duo you guys formed? Uh, man, it was, uh, you know, it was good, man. Uh, you know, uh, Deshaun was at uh, another school, you know, and I talked to him, you know, got him to come to my school, and uh, because I needed another piece because the piece that prior year left because he was a senior. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I talked to Deshaun and got him to come, man. But that year right there, it was a, uh, at first, it was a little, you know, it was up and down at first, uh, you know, because uh, they, me and Deshaun used to bump heads a lot. Uh, we used to get in arguments and stuff. Uh, so, you know, it was up and down, but, you know, it turned out real well. You know, we won. We won that year, right? That's the year we won. We won that year, and, uh, you know, it, it was great, man. But, uh, you know, I wouldn't take – that was, like, one of my – that wasn't my favorite – that was, yeah, that was definitely my favorite championship because I think that's the team that we lost to the year prior and we came back and beat them the next year. So that's what made that like 10 times sweeter that year. So this that championship was the best one. Sure. You also mentioned like kind of bumping head with Deshaun because that's obviously not an easy thing when you kind of any basketball player or any sport really has to learn to play with other star players. And you also do that mm-hmm. when you go to Buffalo, you do that then obviously at North Texas, guys like Javion. But how do you develop that? Like when you were talking about two elite players come together – how do you form that chemistry? Like, how do you end up getting that chemistry where you guys kind of just work together as opposed to kind of bumping heads and accepting that can both be good players? Uh, because, like, we both realized, like, what what we was trying to do. Like, because it was – at first, I mean, it's high school. Everybody's just trying to score in high school. So, once, mm-hmm. you know, Deshaun – well, I'm not trying to blame on Deshaun, but Deshaun came from a school where, you know, everybody was just trying to shoot we was a winning program. So he came to us thinking it was the same thing. And I was trying to tell him like, like, dude, no, you're not just finna come up here shooting stuff. Like this is my team. Like you got to calm down, like mm-hmm. give it some time. And, you know, so we was just really on that type of stuff. And then like, it just came like, all right, but like, look, you can still do what you do, bro, but let's win. But let's, 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 let's make sure it's the right way. You know, shoot the fade away instead of when it's 15 seconds, shoot it like when it's two seconds left, like that's just the little stuff. It's the little things. So we was really just, you know, focused on getting the little things right with us. And, uh, you know, I mean, it, it didn't work out for the best. Is this sidetracking? We kind of brought the hair a little bit in the beginning there. You kind of got to walk us through this because it's kind of become one of your signature pieces about you. But a lot of guys when mm-hmm. they go through high school and they go to college, they cut it off, they do some different things to switch it up. How have you learned mm-hmm. to really keep this as kind of your signature move, your signature brand, and just kind of walk us through your hair? Oh man, my hair, man. Uh I never in my life had a, a low haircut. Mm-hmm. Uh I chopped it, I cut it one time because I had to get dreadlocks, but it was never like low on my head. Uh I grew up with braids. I had braids until seventh grade, and they were like, no, I had braids until eighth grade, and they were like right down my back. Mm-hmm. Then I cut them to like, you know, have like right here. Got my little dreadlocks. My dreads, they started eighth grade. They was like this long. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had them for nine years. But, it, I mean, it was something uh, – at first, I used to just wear them out. They used to just go all over the place. Then uh, they got, you know, too long and started hanging. So, now it's just like uh, – I mean, I don't really feel them no more. But, like, I can't play with them, like, down like this. I, I have to have them, like, braided up or, like, pulled back because, I mean, I mean, it's just too much. So, honestly, like, I mean – it took a lot of patience, but I mean, this is definitely like something that 
you know, I just can't. I, I wouldn't be able to play without. I don't think. Uh, but I gotta have them braided. I can't play with them like, you know, out. They either gotta be braided in a bun, or like, uh, yeah, just braided in a bun. You know, no, nah, I don't recommend if you, if you don't got like patience. You know, wake if you don't want to wake up in the morning. You know, make sure your hair all right. You know, all of that. I wouldn't recommend dress for you. That's something you just mentioned because there are a couple guys that do have long hair still, and it's kind of mm -hmm. challenging, like you said. It's a different thing that people don't really think about that you have to wake up yeah. early, you have to get it braided, all that stuff. What's some of the funniest mm -hmm. stories you've had? Has, have you ever been last second, you know, to figure, put something together real quick, or has there been any funny story having to deal with the braids? Uh man, one time, uh, this is crazy right here. One time I was at March Madness mm -hmm. this year, I was getting off the bus, and my hair is so long. Uh, it's like the buses have like these little hooks right here, like mm -hmm. right before you get off. And like I had my hair like pulled back, but it was like a little loose. Mm -hmm. So one of my dreads got caught like in the hook. So I'm walking off the uh, bus full speed, got yanked back. I thought like one of my teammates pulled my hair. I got mad, all of that. But it was really the hook on my hair and it yanked me and made me fall. And I slid down like three, three, like three stairs off the bus. So that was probably like the funniest story I got. Dummy story, yeah. And you play for a lot of coaches now with the braids. What's their mm -hmm. reaction like when you first get to meet them? The first recruiting you're talking to, you, like what's mm -hmm. coach, what's Coach Martin's reaction been? Like what's each one of your coaches been to seeing the drapes? Uh, they used to. It's just everybody always used to refer to me as the kid with the hair. So uh, when they first <laughs> talked to me, uh, he, they, everybody always be like, "Yeah, man, the guy told me the kid with the hair," and I immediately knew who he was talking about. Uh, but I mean, coaches really don't have a problem with it. Uh. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, uh, yeah, they don't really have a problem with it. They don't really say too much. I mean, my coaches uh, make jokes about, like, yeah, nobody on this team has hair. But Reese, you know, say so they say stuff like that. Like, but, you know, I mean, they don't really, uh, you know, care. Frank, Mar Coach Martin, uh, he, I mean, he don't really care about it either. He just uh, talked about it from high school. It was like how he remembered me and all of that. But, mm -hmm. you know, that's about it. So will there ever be a point in life they think you might get rid of them, you might cut them down, or is this going to be something you're wearing till the end of it? Uh, man, uh, I thought about cutting it a couple times, but uh, I don't I don't see myself cutting them. Uh, I plan on having them until, I, until they're, like, long and gray. <laughs> For real. Well, let's go to that final year of high school then for you, man, your senior campaign, and you end up winning 4 I player of the year that year. Walk us to that senior year for you, though. Man, that senior year, uh, you know, we weren't as good, uh, you know, uh, I I hate to say that, but mm -hmm. I mean, we weren't we weren't as good, uh, so that so that year, I honestly just was kind of was like on some, like you know, like I tell you, I played all the roles on like mm -hmm. winning teams, like we we was a winning team, but we just didn't win a championship that year, so I say that. So, you know, I was more of the, of the 30 point score type player on that team. So that was the year I kind of just stepped up to like a whole nother level. Like, you know, was, you know, trying to get my name out there more. So I was more on that kind of like, you know, type stuff. I was so I was just more of a scorer. Uh, you know, it was good. But, uh, you know, as far as like, you know, championships and stuff like, you know, we ain't really win nothing but. Mm -hmm. personally I had got all the accolades that I uh you know wanted that year there also was a freshman that walked into that team and Patrick who's now developed he's in the transfer portal right now but mm -hmm. he kind of developed into becoming another great player from that area especially from that school take us mm -hmm. to that though the first day you saw him walk in there as a freshman what was your reaction did you think he's gonna be as good as he's now become no nah, the first reaction when I seen Pat uh <laughs> I kind of like you know I was just like looking at him because he was just like frail and I was you know so I just like looked at him and was just like you know who is this guy but but Pat was a guy that I you know uh you know I love Pat me and Pat was real we, we was cool you know I mean he was a little freshman you know so he was like real nervous around me and stuff but you know I like Pat like when I go back home and used to work out sometimes Pat being there I talked to Pat but uh you know man Pat Pat's a good guy man that was my guy right there they look back at all four years of your high school career. Did you expect to accomplish all the stuff you did? You're a two-time state champion. You've appeared in three of them. You brought player of the year. You got all these accolades. Like, did you think mm -hmm. you're going to have that great of a high school career? 
Uh, honestly, uh, when I was growing, nah, I didn't, I didn't think that. But you know, like it's like when I actually stepped out there, you know, I kind of realized, like, yeah, I probably can. But uh, you know, me looking from middle school, you know, I thought it was a whole different ball game. But mm-hmm. you know, when I actually got there, it was something that you know. More like when you get there, you you can feel it. You can see like, okay, I might can make something happen here because, you know, nobody probably wanted as more as me, you know, so. So you go through the recruiting process and you're being recruited by a few different schools out there. Buffalo is ultimately the one you originally choose. And we know who obviously the head coach out there, Coach Nato, it's just now turning mm-hmm. into becoming one of the, maybe, maybe even the best young coach out there. But mm-hmm. walk through that process though. How is Coach Nato to able to win you over and why did you choose Buffalo? Uh, you know, it was kind of crazy how that happened because, uh, you know, Buffalo actually came down to uh, see one of my friends, Clyde Trap. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he said he got a call about me, you know, so he stopped by my gym and uh, my coach called, Coach Staley called me out of class and was like, you know, coach, you here, you need to come work out real quick. So I came out, I got out of class, you know, I went to work out and, uh, you know, I didn't miss and, uh, you know, I got offered on the spot. You know, and at the time I was getting recruited by other schools, but you know, the other schools was like uh like a H, like HBCUs and you know, so I and I wasn't really trying to go that route. Like, you know, I'm I'm not I'm not trying to do that. So Coach B offered me and it was just like, I mean, I went on a visit, uh they took me to Niagara Falls, uh and I mean I mean, that's all I had at the moment. You know, I mean they were great coaches, you know what I'm saying? It was great, great situation. Obviously we won. You know, but at that time in high school, I mean, that was all I really had, you know, that I was, I mean, that I was fine with, you know, so, you know, that's kind of how that happened. It was, uh, you know, that we was competing with their self, really. And you just mentioned another person to that kind of helped recruit you, and that's because Brian, and he is a guy that the whole staff pretty much, obviously, we see at Alabama was able to find a lot of underrated radar, radar guys. Nathan mm-hmm. Williams had a little bit ago, he talked about finding him, obviously, you know, becoming teammates with Javion, too, but. What was this like kind of seeing that when you see Buffalo, you see Coach Nato, you see Coach Brian, all these coaches, do you think that they were that special? Like how good of coaches do you think they would become? Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, I always knew they would – I always knew Coach Oates was a good coach. Uh, you know, I mean, because he was always – I mean, he was smart. Like Coach, coach Oates is smart. Like he – you know, I mean, he do everything by the numbers. Uh, I mean, he worked – you know, he works really hard at what he do. He does. But I, I always knew – you know, he was a great coach, you know, when I first listened to him talk. But, uh, I mean, yeah, so that, that's just really – I just kind of knew, like, I mean, you kind of – you listen to somebody talk, you – I mean, you will kind of, like, figure out what they're about. Like, if you're really listening, and uh, if you listen to Coach Oates, I mean, you kind of realize, like, he about business and uh, he trying to win. You go out there and probably wasn't the dream scenario overall for you, but you go three yeah. – you start three games, you play you know, overall on 25 of them – you guys make a run, upset Arizona. We'll talk about it in a second. But overall for you, like, as a freshman, how did you feel that year was for you? Man, I, honestly, <laughs> I had a great year. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, I used to go in practice. I used to have fun on the scout team. We used to have, like, we used to, we used to win. Like, practice was like a war. Like, so, you know, that was like wartime for us. We used to scrimmage in practice. So, you know, we used to – so I was really playing in practice, so I was good. You know, my teammates was – my team was so fun. Like, we had a great team. Uh, Yeah, man, so that was a great year for me. My freshman year, even though, like, I didn't really play, I mean, like like you said, it wasn't like – it wasn't the spot for me. Like, it wasn't. But, you know, uh, you know, I made the best of it, made it through the whole year, you know, passed all my classes and – you know, won a championship, so I feel like I got the I got the best, I got the most out of that situation. Uh, but yeah, man, I you know it was overall. You know, I had a great experience out of my freshman year at Buffalo, basketball wise. Now, as I said, there is that big game. Come kind of come time for the tournament. You guys are facing a team. You guys are clearly the underdog once again, and you're playing a guy in DeAndre mm-hmm. Ayton who becomes the number one overall pick. And on the trier, I guess the list goes on. They had a ton of pros on that Arizona yeah. team. You guys come out there, and it's not just an upset, but you guys absolutely run them out of the gym. Walk us to that environment. Like, did you guys think you guys were legitimately going to beat them, and did you think you are going to beat them that badly? Or how was the lo- team locker room? And just walk us through the whole night. Man, uh, when I tell you, like, Coach, <laughs> Coach Oaks, he said we were going to shoot 53s. <laughs> 50. Mm-hmm. We didn't shoot 53s, but, like, 
when he said that, like, I just, like, I knew it. Like, we was going to be good. Like, and yeah. then, like, I mean, we never for in a million years was just like, damn, we're going to lose. Like, we was like, let's go. Like, coach said, let's shoot 53s. So let's go beat these boys. Like, all right, bet. And then, my hey, we went out there. And, I mean, it was just like, it was like they were shocked. Like, they didn't know what hit them because we came out so fast. Hit, like, two threes back to back. Came out fast. And, I mean, they just got hit too hard, you know, couldn't get back up. But, uh, you know, man, that was, I think it was, like, 35,000 in there. Like, that was crazy. Like, crazy, crazy experience in my life. Like, and that's how my Instagram and all that got all the way to 10K because that, like, <laughs> you know, because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean, it's crazy, though. You know, phones blowing up. Uh, even though I ain't even really played, man, I was getting love. Like, I played 35 minutes, so. Then I was a freshman, so it was just crazy because, uh, you know, going from high school, you hear everybody talking about March Madness, you know, and you actually in March Madness your freshman year, you're like, oh, Lord, like, I'm here. So, you know, that was kind of like a dream come true, you know, great experience for my freshman year, and that kind of like, that set the bar for this, but for North Texas, that mm -hmm. set the bar for for like, all just aside, because uh, uh, me and Javion was there together. I told him, well, we told each other, we like, when we found out we was leaving, we was like, man, shit, we're going we gonna to link up. Like, let's go. Like, we're going to link up and we're going to get us one. And uh, yeah, we're going to get into that. And as you said, you grew up watching March Madness. Anyone that loves basketball does that. And especially everyone loves the Cinderella teams. Everyone loves the upset wins. And we always know what happens. The second y'all get back in that locker room, it's a party. You guys are throwing water and all that. But when yeah. you truly get an environment for the first time, though, and you truly get experience that water shower, the party in front of, inside the locker room of an upset win, what's that like? Ooh, man, you might get hit with a trash can, chairs, <laughs> water bottles. Like, it's, like, it's loud, but, like, everything is getting thrown in there. Like, it's wild. It's, it's so fun. And the best part is, like, when you get in there, you're yelling. But the, but the best part about it is when you calm down, and you waiting on your head coach to walk back through the door and y'all turn up again. Like, that's the best mm -hmm. part. So when you get turned and you know, we chill for a little bit, you know, then we wait on uh, the head coach because the head coach be doing a lot of interviews when there's an upset. Mm -hmm. So he'll come in there and he'll just – I mean, I don't know. My head coaches, when they came in, they in there yelling like, ah! <laughs> so it was just kind of like, man, it was just a big, it's a big celebration. You just see everybody smiling. Everybody, like, you know, you don't usually don't see everybody smiling after a regular win. It's just, it's just the, the, the people who play smiling. Like, the last man on the bench who's not playing, he is probably mad. <laughs> but everybody in the locker room was smiling, like, when it's an upset. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's probably, that's the best thing. It's just a joy everywhere. Nobody mad, nobody sad. It's just everybody on the same page. So who celebrated better? Was Coach Nate Oates celebrating harder or was Coach Castle instead celebrating harder this past year? <laughs> I think Mac, I think Mac is the funniest because he, yeah, I think Mac is definitely the funniest celebration I've seen. Like, yeah, so Mac, for sure. Mac. So then you do decide to go, you move on from Buffalo for the season then, you end up going to play a Juco route. But how does it all unfold? Was that something you wanted to do? Did you want to go to Juco? Would you rather play Division One that year? Like, walk us through that whole decision process that led you ultimately going to Odessa. Uh, man, uh, you know, when I put my name in the portal, man, there was a lot of people hitting me up. Uh, well, a lot of JUCOs, I said that. A couple Division Ones. Mm -hmm. uh, but I wanted to go Division One, man. I never wanted to go JUCO. I used to think JUCO was, like, bad, you know. But uh, I had a couple teammates on Buffalo, Montel McCray and Jeremy Harris. They – uh. Jeremy went to Gulf Coast and Montel went to South Plains. And, uh, you know, they kind of just told me, like, man, you need to go Juco, bro. You will, bro, you go crazy, bro. You will get whatever you want, what you, you know what I'm saying? They was like, mm -hmm. that's the place you can go reset. So I always kept that in the back of my mind. And uh, so I ended up, but I ended up, I mean, I ended up getting offers from, like, you know, uh, North Carolina, in HBCU, you know, the same ones that recruited me out of high school. I'm like, no, I'm not coming. No. So uh, I, I just decided to go JUCO, uh, and uh, man, I'm, you know, I just turned back into that, uh, you know, the, the scoring reach, uh, you know, that that type of reach, you know, the reach that that can lead and all of that, uh, and and that worked out 
you know, perfectly for me. You know, I had a coach. I was actually the first player to sign to Odessa because mm-hmm. they got a whole new team and the coach, uh, Coach Bucket called me. I don't know what day, but he called me and was just like, look, I see you're in the portal. I got a whole new team. I'm a new head coach at Odessa. Mm-hmm. I need you on my team. You're the first player I'm calling, so you're my guy. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of just took his word, like, immediately, like, because he sounded so serious to me. Like, I'm like, okay, like, you got my word, coach. Like, if I'm the first guy you signing, like, I'm like, if I'm your guy, I'm coming. Because that's all I wanted at the time. Like, I needed to go. At that time when I realized I was going Juco, I was only going for buckets. Like, I was only going to score and go to, go to school. I ain't care about – I didn't care about nothing else. Like, that's all I wanted to do. So, you know, he kind of told me that. I mean, he, I signed, and I mean, and it worked out perfectly. But, uh, you know, we were winning too. So, and we had some other good players. So, everything really just, like, you know, worked out perfectly with that situation. Uh, You know, and, we, and you know, I still was end up winning. As you mentioned, you also discussed that the HBCU route was not something you wanted to take. We know now, obviously, that a lot of guys have decided to look at that more. Some bigger players have started to go to the HBCU schools. What was it like with you? Like, why was the reason you didn't really want to go to an HBCU? Um, you know what I mean? I mean, because that's just not something. I mean, I don't want to go to, like, a school. You know, just like all of the, you know, all uh, – I don't, I don't want to go to all with school with the same race. Like, that's just not something, like, I'm into mm-hmm. personally because, you know, I – you know, I, I'm just not into that. Like, I, I was just never into it. Uh, I want to be in a diverse place, you know, with a lot of different types of people, a lot of different type of, you know, just a lot of different type of things all in one. So that was just the main reason. It was nothing, uh, you know, really crazy. It was just that, like, you know, I, I just want to be around, you know, a lot of different types of people, you know, really. And so you do that Juco route, and that's something that I've become really high about because obviously, I mean, if you find the best situation to go to Division One, that's the best option. But – Juco is not something that's really untalented. There's tons of talent out there in Juco now. It's loaded top to bottom. Some guys are even making the jump from Juco to NBA now, like Jay Scrub. Uh, a lot of talent's there, though. So when you talk about that Juco, though, what's the level like? Were you shocked at how much talent was there? Like, what was your first impression of Juco? Uh, yeah, see, I, I went to Texas Juco, uh, one of the best Juco's in the uh, country, uh, the best Juco conferences in the country. Yep. Uh, this was one of the best in the country, too, but uh, – I, uh man, the competition was crazy, man. I played some, I played some dudes at JUCO mm-hmm. that I'm talking about, like some dudes that I never forget about, like that I done had like battles with. So, uh, you know, JUCO, man, it's, don't take it lightly. I mean, it's it's JUCO, but I mean, it's college at the end of the day, which is what people don't realize. Like, JUCO is college. So, like, uh, I mean, it's it's some it's some guys in there, man. Uh. Bro, you just gotta be, you know, you just gotta be focused, man. You can't go in there with like a, you know, bullcrap mindset because you're already in a bullcrap place. Like, Juco is bullcrap. You don't mm-hmm. want to be there. Like, so I mean, if you just bring bullcrap on top of bullcrap, I mean, it's never gonna work. So you just really gotta have a, a good, solid mindset, and I feel like you'll be fine. For a lot of guys, the Juco route gives guys a stock mentality, but we discussed earlier, you kind of already had that from high school, growing up where you grew up, but. Mm-hmm. How did that kind of shift your mindset? Did Juco give you more of an edge? Did it give you more of a chip on your shoulder? Or were you kind of just kind of just kind of fit right in terms of you already having a chip you had from before? Oh, yeah. Juco definitely. Juco added, like, a whole nother, like, type of fire to me because mm-hmm. when you go to Juco, it's like everybody forgets about you. Like, because, yep. you know, I mean, Juco is not aired on ESPN. Juco is not aired on TV. You know, I mean, you got to go to YouTube to watch Juco mm-hmm. games. Like, so, I mean, that's just kind of like, you know, would have bring some fire to me. You'll feel, you know, you people, people, you know, people start messing with you because they feel like you're at a junior college. You're not at, you're not in SEC, ACC, or nothing like that no more. Like, or any conference. Like, like I don't like, I, I can't like a tweet about you or nothing no more. Like, you know, so it's just that type of stuff. People forget about you, so that brings some fire to you. Like, okay, you want to do that bit? Mm-hmm. You gonna, you gonna, you gonna be trying to talk to me when I sign. You know, and that's how I always, you know, end up working out, working out. So, so that's just kind of, you know, that ju- it, Juco definitely brought another type of fire to me because I kind of felt like, you know, people kind of forgot about me. Uh, you by yourself all the time. Oh, another thing, Juco, you, if you go to Juco, just make sure you're good with yourself. Make sure you like being by yourself. You're going you're gonna to be a lot of lonely, a lot of lonely times. A lot. Mm-hmm. 
like quarantine. <laughs> and one of the hard parts that I personally see too is that you know that at the end of the day, you want to build that relationship with your guys. Obviously, that roster, you guys want to go out there and win. You want to be friends or what whatnot. But mm-hmm. at the end of the day, you know that for you, especially, you only have one year there, and some guys might have two years. But at the end of the day, once yeah. the two years come up or one year is done, your basketball career could potentially be over. If you don't get those offers, you're, there's nowhere else mm-hmm. to go. Your career is over. So you're kind of competing with everyone in that locker room. Like you want your future to continue. So you're going to compete with your guys in that locker room. How hard is that? And like walk us through that environment and just really having to battle your teammates day in, day out. Man, uh, now that's, now that's where it's like people get separated. And that's where you get separated at. So you're either going to be – an alpha dog. I was an alpha dog. Mm-hmm. So you either gonna be like an alpha dog or you gonna or you gonna get like eight up. Like it's no like in between. Like you gotta be an alpha dog. Like you gotta so it's just like you know, you just gotta really just you gotta be first of all, you gotta be consistent. You like you can't be like one of those front running dudes. Like if you let your teammates so you only be tough when it's going good for you, they not gonna respect you. So you gotta earn their respect. So at first you can't be a front runner, you gotta earn their respect. The second I say, you just got to – I mean, it, it you, go, you got to be a dog. So, you know, you got to have a mentality to where, like, you know, you just always don't fight regardless. Like, even if, like, say if I – I don't I have times I play my teammates in one-on-one and I lose, but I'm still talking like I'm winning. Mm-hmm. But that's just me playing with a mind games and they playing me hard still like they losing. So, mm-hmm. it's just like, you know, so I say that you just got to have a dog mentality. Don't be a front runner. I mean, and shoot, just, I mean, you got to love competing. I mean, those, like you say, every day, literally every day is a fight because whatever you're trying to do, this thing is a, it's a, it's a mind of 12 dudes with the same mindset. I got one year I'm trying to go. Mm-hmm. I need to shoot the ball. I need, to, I need the ball in my hand. So you got to, it's a lot of that stuff. So it's really, you got to, you got to earn it. Like, you know what I'm saying? You can't, you got to earn it. You got to earn it. Anyone that's watched you play ever before knows that you do trash talk some. You always hear a guy that has a dog mentality. But who's been that guy you've gone up against on a different team that you'd say has also had that dog mentality, has had that same trash talking that you've really enjoyed battling with because he's another great trash talker? Oh, man. Uh, it's this guy named uh, – who, who, who? Uh, we lost these two games. I don't even want to talk about, bro, but he was cool. I mean, it, it, was, it was fun talking trash to him. His name uh, – I don't know his first name, but it's like some, some. What team is he on? Something. He's on UAB. He's number zero on UAB. Hmm. Uh, oh, I didn't know who you're talking about. Um, he's like six five. He he's he's pretty good. Uh, him because uh, like we was talking tragedy each other. Like he'll say something to me, and I'd be like, "Bro, shut up!" And he'll be like, "Like damn, bro, you just said something to me, bro. We up five right now. I can't talk. I'm like, bro, y'all up five, bro. Like, shut up." Then now we we cut the score back. I'm like, what you gonna say now? He like, oh now you want to talk, and so it was just like funny laughing like that, you know stuff like that. Uh, then this is other guy, uh, some dude on La Tech, you know, uh, uh, me and him be getting into. We really be like really like talking to each other, like we about to fight each other. But you know, at the end of the game, when the buzzer goes, win or lose, we just look at each other and be like respect. I'm gonna see you next year, you know stuff like that. So. I done had some fun battles. There was a guy when you were out there at Odessa that I've also interviewed a couple weeks ago in Jawan, who also is going through his stuff. He's in the transfer portal right now, finding his next option. But walk mm-hmm. us through your guys' bond. Like, how did you guys grow that connection? What was it like playing alongside him? Man, Wani, man, that's my that's my brother. I was on the phone with him earlier. Uh, it's kind of crazy. Well, it's not crazy how me and Wani, like, uh, you know, first started talking. Uh, first day he walked on campus, like, I was walking. And I just asked, like, well, we asked each other, we just like looking at each other. We like, you who? Like, and he was like, he's like, he's like, yeah. I'm like, where you from? He was like, New York. So we just really got to chopping it. And then, man, uh, I was staying with this other dude. And, you know, I was, but me and Wani he was chopping it up. So I'm like, I'm like, bro, I'm staying with him, bro. I'm like, you, you got to get him out the wing. So Wani literally packed all his stuff, moved it into my room and move dude out the room. So that's how me and Wani, so that's how, like, when I realized, like, Wani did, I'm like, okay, this is my, this is my dude right here. Like, this is what I'm going to rock with. So ever since that day, ever since Wani moved our dude out the crib and put his stuff in there, 
Yeah, I'm like, okay, this dude's crazy. This is my guy right here. This is who I'm gonna rock with right here. Y'all like made the connection on site then? Oh yeah, it was it was first day on site. First day. Mm -hmm. And when you guys kind of get on that court, because once again, we just talk about the whole teammate mentality, but he even kind of discussed you two. Like you two weren't really like battling in terms of finding the best offers. You guys really did form that dynamic duo that helped you guys make that great run, helped you guys win a lot of games. What was it like just developing that on the court? Oh yes, yeah. see, see the one is like one. He he got the me and Lonnie think the same. Like he got like a like he from New York. You know, mm -hmm. New York guys got a dog mentality. So you know, we always me and him. I don't know. I just like battle. I can go. I can go to war with Lonnie because Lonnie he he literally he just like me. we do anything to win. You know, anything tough minded. And, you know, I mean, shoot, Lonnie we 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 both wanted the same thing like. I mean, we, we called it J.J. Island, like, because he was on this side. I was on this side, and like, mm -hmm. nobody was scoring. So it was, like, lock up. So, you know, we just called it J.J. Island. But the little stuff like that just shows, like, you know, that it was just that. Like, that's how much we care. Like, we called the, the side over here on defense J.J. Island. Like, what? Like, that's just how much, like, we care. So I just said that was my dude. Like, we think the same, tough. I mean, and see, we, we both understand. You know what it takes. When you see Wani go out there now and living out his dream, you obviously see a couple of guys, a lot of guys that on that roster went Division One now. What's like mm -hmm. seeing all you guys though, like go out, live out your dreams now, and all are successful at the Division One level? Man, it's 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 amazing to see it, man. Because uh, I mean, we we had plenty of conversations in, in junior college about it, like mm -hmm. you know, sitting at Odessa just by ourselves, plenty of nights, just talking about you know stuff like this, big stage, you know. Uh, winning the NCAA tournament, getting an upset in the NCAA tournament, like, this is stuff, like, you know, we talked about, like, you know, in high, in, in in junior college, you know, in our dorm room. So, uh, you know, seeing seeing all the guys, you know, doing their thing, actually in the tournament and getting wins, because I was mm – -hmm. it was another guy from Odessa that got a win in the tournament too. So, like, you know, to see that, like, I mean, I mean, man, I feel like – I mean, we did our job. You know, we – you know, we did what we said we was going to do. You then go through your second recruiting process then. That's where you choose North Texas, and we know what you've achieved the past two years, but why is the school that you chose? Like, what was about North Texas that stood out and you decided that's where I want to be playing at? Oh, my, my, uh, my, I was just, honestly, at that point, I was just worried about who I could trust, you know, because, uh, yeah, I was just wondering about who I could trust at that point, you know, Coach B, at North Texas, which is, he was just in the gym literally every day. You know, uh, home games, away games, he was always there. I mean, and that's just something I just kind of like, you know, I, I kind of like, that's that's what I was, I was like, okay, like, I, like this is probably, this is my dude right here. Like, I messed with him. And then me and Javion had the same offer. And then me and Jay Ham just kind of talked about it and was like, all right, look, so we're going to North Texas. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We had we had Rhode Island offer together, and we had something else. But like you know, what I'm saying we like, we was like North Texas because Javion already knew the coaches at North Texas. The coach at North Texas and me had a good relationship, so it was like, I mean, it would have been crazy. Like it wouldn't be that like, it was only right to go to or go there for real, for real. Like I mean, I, I I know I can't say that, but I mean, like it was only it was literally like I like for Buffalo. Like it was literally only right. I mean, I had Rhode Island, SMU. Uh, I was talking a little bit to Oklahoma State out of high school, out, out of JUCO, but you know, like North Texas was just, it was just, I mean, it was just kind of so perfect. It was right there, you know, then me and Javion reverted back to Buffalo and we talked about what we was going to do, you know, and uh, I mean, it was kind of just like right here in front of us. Like all we had to do was sign a paper, you know, what I mean, and the rest, <laughs> the rest is history, like for real. And so you two did decide that. You mentioned a little bit earlier that you guys kind of started seeing each other a little bit back at your time in Buffalo. But mm -hmm. what was that? Like, how did you develop that relationship? Because when you went to JUCO, obviously you guys separated, but just in con constant communication, we guys started talking to each other constantly, always kind of deciding, hey, we should team up here, we should team up here. Like, how did this all come together? Because ultimately did create this dynamic duo. Oh, uh, yeah, me and Jay Ham, well, we didn't talk every single day, but we mm -hmm. talked, uh, you know, we talked, we talked every other day and, uh, we always remind each other, like, all right, Naka, like, don't forget, like, you know, we, we got something planned, like, mm -hmm. you know, so we kind of always just hit each other with that, but it was never, uh, 
you know, we never like just text every day, like, you know, because uh, I mean, I mean, we got our own lives, you know. Yeah. So he he kind of did his thing at times, you know, but we always kept in contact uh, a little bit, but not every day. So with all your memories you create with him now, what's the funniest memory you remember when you think about Jay Ham? I ain't gonna lie, it's like it's so many because like ah. Uh, I don't know. He upstairs right now too. Uh, <laughs> what's so funny about J. Ham? He's scared of dogs. Like you know, it, it's not like he only. It's, I got a dog, and that's the only dog like he's not scared of because he grew up around him. But J. Ham is he? He he don't, he don't like dogs like at all. You look at all the memories you guys have created so far. What's the first thing that comes to mind? Like when you, the first time you think about Jay Ham, hey, like what's the first thing that comes to mind when you guys talk about you two? We was playing uh, Western Kentucky. It was like a minute on the clock, overtime at the mm-hmm. crib. Jay Ham threw me the lob. I dumped it, and they called a timeout. And me and Jay Ham like chest bumped, and we was just, like turning the crowd up, and it was like so loud in there, like. So that was probably like, like when, when I think of like that. J Ham, like that, that's literally like the first thing that come to my head is like the lob, like sealing the champion, our first championship together. Mm-hmm. Uh, when he threw the lob, dunked it, they called timeout, and we was just like, you know, turning the crowd up, all that. So that's that's something that come to my head. Rank your best dynamic duo. We talk about Deshaun back there in high school. Obviously, you and Wani then out there in JUCO. You and J Ham in North Texas. Rank the three of them. Like, where do you guys rank up in terms of the best dynamic duos? Man, uh, Jay Ham the best. I can't. He's got to go with the championships. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I say Jay Ham the best. Then me and uh, and me and Wani because not nah, in me and Deshaun because we won the championship together. Then me <laughs> and Wani because we just we just won games together. I mean, we won the championship. We won a regular season championship at Odessa. Mm-hmm. We did. We did. Uh, but. You know what I'm saying? We ain't getting no hardware or nothing for that. Mm-hmm. I got a ring in high school and I got <laughs> a ring in college in uh, North Texas. Absolutely. Let's go into that junior year a little bit. You obviously had a pretty solid year, nine points, three rebounds, assists and a steal per game. You really do develop them into that guy where you're starting every single game now. You lead your team to regular season title. Walk us to that junior year for you. I my man, my junior year, it was it was cool, man. Uh you know, uh I felt like it could have been a little better. You know, I wanted it to be a little better, but, uh, you know, we won. Uh, you know, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, you know, Texas is great. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, I, it's nothing I really wish I could redo for my junior year because, like I said, we won. I mean, I just wish I could have. I, I wanted to play a little bit better personally. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, my junior year was great, man. Uh, first year here. You know, we thought it was, we thought it was gonna be a little, you know, weird or different when we first got here. But man, it was, it was kind of like first day we just like, you know, fit right in, and it was, you know, and they was, then our coaches was all in on us, so it was like, you know, I mean, if your coaches all in on you, and like, I mean, it's not you, I mean, you gotta go out there and play. So it was just like our coaches was all in, and they put us out there, and they was doing the die with us, and, and I mean, we got the job done. You discussed Coach a little bit before, but you've now spent two years in full with him now. You've obviously created a lot of memories. Which one's your favorite thing? Like, what's your favorite memory of Coach? Well, my favorite coach is uh, Coach Hodge. But my favorite coach was uh, Coach Hag. Well, one of my other favorite coaches was Coach Hag. He just passed away mm-hmm. yesterday mm-hmm. Uh, in a car crash. Rest in peace, Coach Hag. Uh, but – uh. Coach Hag and Coach Hodge is definitely my two favorites because I mean those guys kind of, you know, don't they? They it's some coaches that you know beat around the bush with certain stuff, but like these coaches is kind of the ones that just tell you like you know straightforward, you know how they feel, you know disregarding how you might feel, you know. I mean they're gonna say it in a in a nicer way, you know what I'm saying? Just a, but they're gonna let you know like, you know, if you bull crapping or not, or mm-hmm. what they think. So, you know, I mean you can't really, you know. You can't you can't not like those things. So I mean, you know, that the guys that kept it real with me, uh, Coach Hodge, 
I mean, my other coaches kept it real with me too. Don't get me wrong, but mm-hmm. you know, I'm talking about like regardless of how I might feel, uh, Coach Hodge and Coach Hag. Rest in peace, Coach Hag. Uh, those are my two favorites. Absolutely, man. Well, then you go in this quarantine, everything she gets COVID going on, and we know you're shut down and you're pretty much locked into whatever you're able to get into gym wise, however you're working out. But you as a player, now each player kind of looked at this different. Like, what could you improve on? You know, you're, you're not going to be with a team for a long time. What was that thing you locked in on? Like, what was the biggest thing you tried improving on during the quarantine time? Bro, honestly, I, bro, I was trying to improve like myself. Like, you know, I mean, I knew I, I mean, I knew I can, I couldn't touch a basketball at the time. So, like, you know, I, I automatically when the quarantine happened, I just, I tried to just work on like myself, like you know, like stuff I could control, like, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you know, the way I handle certain situations. I even got me a dog to even help me with my patience, you know, to help me with stuff like that. So that's that's kind of the way I went with it, bro. I just kind of, you know, tried to get my mind, my mind right and stuff like that, you know, mentally so I can be in better places like when I get mad you know be in better places mentally and stuff so that's kind of the route I took instead of like basketball wise because I knew I mean I know I had to get better at stuff but I knew it was going to be a pause on certain stuff and uh you know I mean I ain't take I just took like two three weeks off so I mean like two weeks off so you know I know that every guy can obviously this past year of COVID was not an easy process for a lot of guys, but especially guys that have already gone through multiple years of normal basketball. So how did you get accustomed to it? Getting the daily tests, having to go all the locker room protocols, wearing the mask nonstop. How did you adjust the COVID year? Man, it, at first, man, I forgot my mask every time I went out. Like, <laughs> like you know, I, I couldn't, I couldn't, like it was something that was just not normal to me. But I mean, you know, I kind of just like, you know, I just, I mean, I don't really like it, but I mean, I just think about like, okay, like it's clean. What's the cleanest thing to do? You know, just put my mask on right now. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's just kind of how I go about it. It's, it's still a little different. Like, you know, it was weird, but, you know, I mean, I mean, it was kind of like the new norm. So, I mean, like, it's just like you either going to get with it or you're not going to be able to go in stores or eat, you know? So mm-hmm. I kind of just had to fall in line. I used to forget my mask all the time, though, but, you know, it, it kind of, uh, it's a norm for me now. It's like I keep my mask on me like my phone now. So now you go through this entire year, and this is by far your best collegiate year in terms of your Division One level, and you obviously go out there and have multiple big outings, two of which those you have two 21-point outings, one against Marshall, one against Mississippi Valley. Take us mm-hmm. those two nights, though. When you got those opportunities to go out there and score at that level, what are those two nights like? Man, it, uh... Man, I missed it, man. Like, uh, like honestly, bro, like, bro, my, bro, look, I, bro, honestly, I missed it, bro. Like, you know, uh, I missed the feeling, bro, because uh, I just, I don't know, bro. I missed it, bro. I ain't, I ain't feel that in a long time, bro. Since, since you know, since like uh, junior college and stuff like that. So, bro, you know, when I used to get twenty, bro, I kind of hate saying it because I felt like I just started playing basketball, but. Mm-hmm. You know, the, just the team I was on, you know, getting 20 was not like, I mean, you know, you got seven dudes scoring double figures. It's, it's kind of hard to get 20. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, I mean, those games, man, it felt good, you know, with the ball going through the net, getting 20, man. Felt, it felt good, man. Uh, I wish I could do that every night. I, I, I could if I, you know what I'm saying, took the shots. But, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, that's, that's a feeling that I, I wouldn't mind having every night. So then we're going to talk about one of the last things about your college career before we talk about the transfer is you have another big upset win to cap off this year. And the whole country now knows this is fresh in everyone's mind. 13 C versus the four Purdue. You guys go out there once again, you just beat them. Take us to this upset that win. Like how special was this, like that, that game? And what was the new game plan for this game? Like how do you guys approach that night? What made this one so special is that uh, the year before we was like, we thought that was the year we was going, you know, complete what we fully, you know, said we was going to do at Buffalo. You know, we was there that year, but we watched everything happen. But, you know, and last, and the, last year, it got cut short because of COVID. Mm-hmm. And, you know, this year came around, man. So, like, you know, once we actually got that chance, like, we was like, like, me and JV on locker right beside each other. I looked at him, I'm like, I'm like, bro, <laughs> we just got to eat the food. It's right here. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I mean, the rest is history again. Like, we went out there, man, uh, 
It's like those guys got hit hard. We came off fast, man. We was making shots. You know, we was making shots both halves. So it was like, I mean, I mean, we got top 14 defense in the country, you know, so we wasn't like, we wasn't no little boys out there. So we were some big boys out there and we just, we handled our business. We did what we thought we was going to do. We went out there. We thought we was going to win, you know, nobody on our, in our staff. I mean, nobody going to say it, of course, but like, I mean, nobody, I didn't think we was going to lose. I, I, I seen what, I seen they had a team full of freshmen. I mean, they were good uh-huh. freshmen, but I seen a team full of freshmen. And I'm like, I've been here four years, bro. Like, y'all are tripping. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, that's just kind of the mentality, like, my whole team had. Like, we had four seniors in the lineup, one junior. So, we was old. So, uh, you know, that just, you know, that just kind of, uh, you know, I felt like the experience, you know, helped us a little bit, you know, because we kind of knew, like, what, like, what it was. You know, even though I was the only guy on the team who was, there at a March Madness before and who actually seen it mm-hmm. like you know it was just like all of our guys had that fire like they've been there before when you get back in that locker room then you have a whole celebration and you know obviously that this is another big win for you guys you guys are all having fun the media is going crazy what was it like mm-hmm. just being part of that media and how did you embrace all the attention we're getting now man it was uh it was crazy man uh you know uh, we got the love man uh you know, we lived it up that night, man. Uh, but we kind of, uh, man, we was greedy. We wanted some more, man. We wanted to play. We was ready to play Villanova. So we kind of, you know, enjoyed it that night. The media was crazy. Everybody on my team great game, like 700 followers, you know. So it was just like, I mean, everything was great, man. Like, I, I can't, I can't, like, I loved it. But, but we was so, like, you know, we had a couple guys just like, man, we can't get you happy. We got Villanova, so like that's that that's the mentality we had. Uh, but uh, it was it was great, man. Uh, definitely to do it by yourself. And uh, for me, and I was kind of like you know like a job finished, you know type type thing for me. Like even though uh, we didn't win the, the tournament, but you know I kind of personally I kind of I completed like all my goals you know, that I wanted, you know, since freshman year of high school. I mean, freshman year of college, you know, saying that I was going to be, you know, one of the main players in the upset NCAA tournament. I was going to win back-to-back championships. I was going, you know, all of that. And uh, mm-hmm. so it happened. It worked out. Well, let's get into wrapping this up a little bit. We're going to talk about, about your big move to wrap this up. So we know always discussing South Carolina where you're going to be headed now. You had a lot of schools with interest in you, though. You could have went to a quite a few different schools. What was it about South Carolina, though? How did Coach Moore and that program separate themselves from everyone else? Uh, because it was more like a – well, I feel like what separated South Carolina, all the other schools that recruited me were recruiting me, uh, you know, they kind of already had their guys. Mm-hmm. And uh, Frank Martin, you know, when he called me, he told me he don't he doesn't have his guys. You know I mean? It's kind of like uh, – like uh, he was like, you know, they had a, they had a kind of bad year. You know, he was mm-hmm. telling me, you know, you know, it's about the team and uh, you know, he was just telling me like he have no guys, you know, and that's why he was calling me. You know, it kind of reminded me of my uh what my Juco coach said to me. I mean, and then you know it's back home. Uh my family haven't seen me play in four years. Uh family or friends. So like, you know, what I mean, and I, like I said, I thought the opportunity to go home was over with. You know, I didn't know about we didn't think we was gonna get this extra COVID year. Mm-hmm. So you know, I just looked at it as a blessing, like, all right, it's God, you know. He gave me a chance to go back home. I'm not finna let it pass through my fingers. And this is what made it so crazy. Like, nobody don't know this. But I was literally – like, I talked to all my other coaches at North Texas about coming back. I was about to come back to school. Because you, I don't know if you know this, but I wasn't – like, I, to, I told you, I wasn't – I didn't want to put nothing out. Mm-hmm. Like, so I was trying to keep everything under the table because I always – in the back of my head, I was thinking, like, Okay, I'm, I might be going back to North Texas. Like, so uh, I was, I talked to all my assistants. Like, I didn't call my head coach on purpose because I know that's the person I got to call and tell I want to come back. Like, and it was going to be official. So I called my assistants first and just told them, yeah, I'm thinking about coming back. And I was supposed to call my head coach at five o'clock. Frank Martin called me at 4 30 and offered me a scholarship and was like, you know, talking to me. Mm-hmm. And if he had to wait 30 more minutes, like, I was I would have been back at North Texas, but 
Frank Martin told me on the phone too. This is why it's even crazy. Frank Martin told me on the phone. He was like, I was gonna call you next week, as in this week. He was gonna call me this Monday coming up. And I'm like, Coach, you had to call me, Coach. I would have been back at North Texas, Coach. Like, you know what I'm saying? So that's just how crazy, like, you know, stuff mm-hmm. works. So I, I kind of was like, okay, it's got to be – it's God. You know, he giving me a chance to go back home, be a main player, play in the SEC. So now I'm thinking, okay, I do what I do here. If I do what I do on this level, to this level, I mean, you know, it's like the only really – the only way is up, for real. So as you said, this is going to be a rebuild kind of year. They weren't the best last year, and there's a lot of guys mm-hmm. gone. So far, you guys have added an Eric. They've added an AJ, Chico, along with yourself. What's mm-hmm. this team going to look like? Because you guys still have a lot of roster spots to come fill, a couple of the good freshmen coming in too. But mm-hmm. what's this team going to look like? What's your expectations? Because you're a winner. You won a lot of games. And some of these other guys have mm-hmm. too. But what's the expectations? Well, how good can this team be? What's the goals for this team this year? Uh, honestly, I think this I think this, this team can be real good. Uh, you know, it's just all about uh, – they need somebody. Well, it just got to be somebody that just – that's just not – you know, it just got to be somebody to put their foot down and somebody who don't really care, like, you know, about nothing. And I'm that guy, like, you know, so I'm going to be that guy to just step in and just, you know, if any – like, it's so – you know, it's always, like, players on the team that certain players don't want to say nothing to because they either, like – you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I'm the guy. I'm the guy that's going to step to, like, anybody, like, you know what I'm saying? Then I'm in my hometown, so, like, you know, what – you know, so nobody can do nothing to me. So like, mm-hmm. you know, like I'm a, uh, you know, I'm gonna just try to, I'm gonna be a great leader. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try my hardest to like lead the guys, you know, and just try to show them the right way. And I feel like they'll believe me because I actually been there, you know, and then done it. So, uh, you know, I mean, and then if they be like, you ain't done it with a hot team, I'm like, we beat a big team. So you know, I can tell them like I done did literally all of this. So mm-hmm. you know, I'm gonna just try to be like that positive leader towards them. You know, just show them the way, you know, you know, just get them on track. To give Gamecock fans a little bit of idea about yourself, what's one word that you'd say could describe you? Like the entire entire James Reese package, everything about you on and off the court, what's one word to describe you? Excited. Well, in it, interesting. <laughs> interesting. You would be very interested. You, you, you don't really know what I – you don't want to know – you don't know what I'm going to do. Like, you know, it's kind of just like a, a surprise. Mm-hmm. And that's what you said when you put your commitment post out there and even show the best of me yet. Walk mm-hmm. us through like, what is the best to you? How good can you be this upcoming year? And, and that was like an insider because the people back home kind of understood what I was saying. Mm-hmm. When I'm back home, the energy that I get, this this just the type of confidence that I have is just different. And, and that's just the best. That's the best of me. You know, when I'm playing, when I got that that home feeling, you know, just just knowing my mom in the stands, my sisters, like just knowing that, like, like that's the best of me. Mm-hmm. So, and I feel like you know, this year, you know, the best of me is, is about to come out. You know, this is where everything come together. Like I said, you know, all the roles, you know, all of this. So it's like this final year is just gonna be the, you know, this is gonna be the year, Reese. You know, just stack all everything on top of each other, and just this is gonna be the best reason. Absolutely, man. Did you and Jay Ham ever talk about possibly teaming up one more time? Do you think about joining each other back in North Texas, going to the school together, or did I know we kind of know his plans a little bit now? But did you guys ever talk mm-hmm. about teaming up for one more year? Uh yeah, we uh we 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 said something about it, but honestly, like we Jay Ham mindset different. Like he he on. Um, talk about nothing that he don't want to do so he was just more like he was talking about like we was talking about pros I mean, we weren't even talking about coming back to school man we always we try to speak everything into existence so uh, we were talking about being pros man you know we we were just we we always wanted to you know play with each other but like you know we kind of like I said when we did that it was kind of like you know job finished like like now let's go let's go get our personal goals now we done we done did it as a team now that let's go Let's go get our fruits now. So that's kind of like, you know, we were, we we're, we we're, we're love to be teammates again, but, you know, it's bigger and better things for me and him to accomplish. So, you know, and we both respect that too. Absolutely. Man. Well, a couple more things before I let you go. One thing is you also have no worries. I know you always put that out there. That's your hashtag. Take us through what that means. Uh, you know, zero worries, man. That's just, uh, 
you know, that's just something I live by, man. Like, you know, I try not to, I don't worry myself about nothing. Like, you know, I'm just always trying to, you know, I always think I can beat something. Like, uh, you know, I'm always come out on top. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's just zero, it's just zero worries, man. Like, you know, that's what uh that's why I wear zero, you know, and that's just something I'm always, you know, hashtag, you know, whatever I say, zero worries because you know, I ain't really never worried. Uh, well, I'm worried sometimes, but, uh, but like, you know, between those lines, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and in life, I just, you know, I always figure it out. And I was like rapping, discussing a legacy, because that's something I know all guys want to leave behind for themselves. So when you are mm-hmm. done playing basketball someday, what do you want to be remembered for, for to achieve both on and off the court? Man, on the court, I just, I just want to be remembered as, man, I want to be a guy who won, you know, a guy who... You know, I want to be I'm a guy who is like, you know, uh, I want to be like one of those guys, man, that the guys just, you know, like if you talk basketball about this, that like you got to bring this guy up. Like, I want to be like mm-hmm. one of those players, like, that you just got to bring up. Uh, I mean, I want I want a good rep of my name, you know, tough inside the lines, you know, uh, you know, and to just do whatever to win, man. That's why I kind of just want to leave my legacy. Like, do whatever to win, hardworking. You know, and, and just, you know, get it, get it however it comes and just make it better if it's not good. No doubt, man. And kind of talk about your faith a little bit. Obviously, being a believer, how has God kind of helped get you to the point you're at today? Man, God, man, God has did, like, so many, so, so many things for me because uh, I didn't did, I didn't did, like, you know, a lot of stuff, uh, you know, and it could have been, like, you know, I ain't do nothing crazy, but yeah, I didn't did some things where it could have been, like, you know, over for me, you know, put on pause and stuff. So, you know, God, he, you know, he looked out for me, uh, put me in situations where I had to sit down, uh, you know, and, and think about where, think about myself and see, you know, and see if, like, you know, I really love the game. So, he, I'm, I, I'm thankful for the positions that he put me in, uh, you know, but God, has, you know, he, he's my savior. He led me, you know, all of this, and I wouldn't be able to know do none of this without him because I mean I mean he is there that's the only way the only way would you say it's like one memory or one kind of thing specifically a certain time that you kind of remember God showing up in your life that really helped you kind of grow your relationship with him all right bro this this is crazy mm-hmm. I'm glad we ended on this bro but look <laughs> so we was playing Western Kentucky same game I was talking about when uh Javion threw the lob and we locked it up mm-hmm. so going into it was four or five seconds left on the end of regulation. It was me and this guy at the top of the key. He drove in. I fouled him. The score was 92-92. He went to the free throw line. It's two seconds on the clock. Mm-hmm. He is a 92% free throw shooter. He is a 92% free throw shooter. Mm-hmm. I fouled him. It's a one and one. He got two free throws. He missed both. <laughs> He missed both. And that is the that that day I was like, I was living right. That whole week, I literally did everything that I had to do correctly. And I was just like, hands down, that's God. That that dude was living wrong and I was living right. That is God. Like that was the that was the day I was just like, okay, yeah, that's God for sure. Absolutely, man. Well, congratulations on the big move, man. I'm excited to see what God got next for you. And I appreciate you taking time. Come on today, man. All right, man. Appreciate you, man, for having me. Of course, welcome on, man. God bless. All right, same.